Hey everybody, my name is Patrick. You may know me as Rig Papa on the Vera Community Forums, and today I am going to cover the most elemental thing you can do with Reactor, uh, and that is get it installed. This is the first in what I hope is a series of videos uh, that I do about getting started with Reactor and also covering more advanced topics. So before I launch into that, I very quickly want to apologize uh, for any problems with quality of camera or lighting or anything like that. I don't have much equipment. So I guess maybe I'll work on some of that um, as need arises. But uh, for right now, I think we'll mostly be focused on the screen and you won't be focused on my mug. So we're going to get right to it. Uh, we're going to start with, uh, of course, I'm in my dashboard, my Vera dashboard. I'm logged in. I happen to be logged in locally here, and I think that's really the way to go um, when you're doing important things like installing apps and whatnot. Uh, so I'm going to go to apps, my apps, and you can see the reactor's not there. So I'll move on to install apps. And it just so happens that Reactor comes up right as the first item on the list, and that's because it was recently updated. But if it doesn't come up right away for you, then just hit or type Reactor rather into the search field and hit Search App, and then it'll come up, and then you can hit the Details button in that row, and then go ahead and click the Install button. And we'll clear all these other dialogues. Very good. Now it says App Installed, but in fact it's not actually installed yet. It's got a bunch of work to do in the background including download all the pieces of uh, the plugin from the Vera servers, which can take a few time, a few tries. And then also it has to create uh, the base reactor device and reactor itself creates some of uh, devices that are hidden. So you need to let it finish its work. So don't rush this process. I actually encourage you to walk away uh, and, and let this process finish. And I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to pause the video here for a second and come back uh, when the install is finished. So I'll be right back. All right, and we're back, and uh, if we look here, we can now see um, that it has updated this. We still have the little rolling busy uh, icon here, but at the bottom here, it now says config. It is now safe to exit from this screen. So this is really your big signal that it's finished. And I encourage you to really let this process wait until it's done. And not just this, but you know, anytime you create a device or, or you include a Z-Wave device or anything like that, you really need to let Vera have the time to finish its work because a lot of problems are caused by you know rushing it and then you're you know, you're working with a half configured device or something like that things get confused it just really things go much better when you just take your time do one thing at a time and come back to it so we finished that i'm going to go ahead and click exit here on this and we can go back now to the device list we can see uh, there's our reactor and of course it kind of looks funny and one of the things we want to do whenever we do anything important on the vera i don't think people do this enough Whenever we install an app, remove an app, create a device, remove a device, change a device name, change the room it's in, whatever it is that you know we do to the structure of our network or to the overall configuration of the Vera itself, I think it's really, really important that we hard refresh the browser. What do I mean by hard refresh? Well, normally on the browser, you can just hit the refresh button and it'll repaint the page. But when you do that, it doesn't necessarily reload all the scripts and other data that are behind the page that you're looking at. It'll fetch sort of the page content itself, but it won't fetch some of the other stuff that needs to be updated. And that's really, really important, particularly on the Vera. So what we're going to do is a hard refresh. And the way you do that is on Firefox for Windows, you hold down the Shift key. Or if you're in Chrome for Windows, you hold down the Control key. And then you click this refresh icon up here. Or you can push the F5 button on the keyboard. So on Firefox, again, it's Shift plus F5 or Shift plus Refresh icon. On Chrome for Windows, it's Control plus F5 or Control plus this icon. And on Mac, I don't have a Mac, but apparently it's Command Shift R is the hard refresh. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to do this hard refresh right now. And we're going to see when it hard refreshes. It's going to take a second. We're going to see when it hard refreshes that now when I go to the device list, my reactor device shows up with the blue icon. So this is the reactor master device. It is the device that represents the plugin itself. And all of the devices that you create, all the logic that you create, that's going to be created inside of what are called reactor sensors, which are child devices of the main reactor device, the blue icon device. So let's go ahead. It says here open control panel is a way of drawing our attention to it. So let's go ahead and do that and open the control panel and we'll see that there's a button here that says add sensor. And we're going to do that. We're going to go ahead and click this button and create our first reactor sensor. 
So again, this is one of those operations where in the background, Vera is uh, doing a lot of work to create a new device for us. And so as you can see from the little notation here on the screen, it says adding sensor, please hard refresh your browser. So yes, we are going to hard refresh again, and I'm going to go ahead and do that now. This doesn't take very long, but it does reload loop, so it takes a second. Okay, and boom, there it is. And there is our brand new reactor sensor. So, thank you, Windows. So, um, we have just installed Reactor and created our first Reactor sensor, and we're now ready to start building some logic. So, that'll be the end of this video, short and sweet, just to get started. How do you get this thing installed? How do you create a sensor, a Reactor sensor with it, so that you can do some program logic? We've done those two things. In the next video, we'll do some basic program logic. I'll show you how conditionals work. I'll show you how activities work. And uh, then as the series of videos continues, we'll get more and more complicated uh, with things. We'll get into more depth. And I hope you all will make suggestions about, you know, what I can cover and what kind of problems you'd like to see me solve and how I approach the problems. But of course, I also want to see your solutions. So if you have a cool solution, I would love to, uh, to have your config and, uh, and see what you've done. All right. Onward. We'll get, uh, we'll get to the next video, I guess, in a little while, hopefully uh, shortly. And uh, thanks for being with me right now. Uh, if this video works, uh, works out for you and you like the video, please give it a like. It's the usual YouTube thing. Please subscribe if you want to be notified of new videos. And again, my name is Patrick. You can find me as Rigpapa, R-I-G-P-A-P-A, -P -A -P -A, on the Vera Community Forums. Thanks very much. See you next time.